So in this episode, I'm gonna go into detail about the difference between color boost and saturation and show you when and why you'd use each one. So let's go and take a look. So this is the shot that we're gonna work on and I've already adjusted the first node to give us a good balance. So if I just take the bypass off, you can see there that what I've been going for is making sure we've got a good skin tone to start with. We've got nice clean walls, our, our blacks are good, but I haven't added any saturation, as you can see down here, or color boost. All right, so we're gonna do all that on node two. So the only things I've done in here is lift gamma gain, a little bit of temperature adjustment, that sort of thing. So let's move on to node two. The first thing we're gonna do is look at saturation. Now what saturation does is it increases all the values uniformly. So as I increase saturation, everything is increased evenly. Now you can see that moving on the vector scope here. And if you don't know how to use a vector scope, I suggest you look at the episode I did on how to read a vector scope, which I'll put a link to, and you should watch that first, really. So what's happening now, as we increase saturation, you'll see, particularly here where the peppers are, that they are going out of legal area. So this is our legal safe area. And so just to get that within broadcast safe, I'm gonna just knock the saturation back a little bit, keeping an eye on this box here and we're now safe. So I'm gonna grab that as a still and I'm gonna label this saturation. So we've got a nice saturated image, good neutral white wall still and neutral blacks in the hairband. So what I'm gonna do is reset this node and let's take a look at the color boost function. Now what color boost is doing is unlike saturation, which increases saturation in a linear fashion, color boost will boost desaturated areas before it will boost saturated areas. So what happens is things like this bottle here that's quite pastely um, will have more saturation added to it over the peppers. So as I increase color boost here, you see we get a nice vibrance to the image, okay? Everything gets increased, but the desaturated areas are getting boosted much more than the peppers. And we can see that on the scope here, the peppers are still sitting nice and legal, but all this is getting much more rich. Now, one thing to look out for here is that our neutral colors, our wall and our hairband, are actually getting a big boost of saturation, which is not what we actually want. If we compare that to what we had on our saturation, if I just double click that and wipe, you see that our walls is nice and neutral, whereas here we're now getting this horrible color cast coming in. So you really have to be careful with color boost. For example, let's have a look and see what's going on here. If we come down to the hairband, you'll see that this has really introduced some color now and it's really exaggerating the bit of noise that we had in there. And compared to just using saturation, you see that is a much more pleasing look going on there. We'd obviously need to denoise this a little bit, but the blacks are staying much blacker. If I undo that, you see it's got like a green tint in it now. So which one is the best to use? When we use Color Boost, we get this really nice vibrance and our colors stay legal for longer, but we start to lose our whites and blacks. Whereas if we use Saturation, we keep our nice clean blacks and whites, but our colors can go out of range very quickly. So now you know the difference between the two, it's quite hard to actually say which one is the best. So I tend to work with saturation a lot more than I work with color boost. However, the two can work hand in hand. So let me just show you a technique. I'm gonna reset this and I'm gonna increase saturation to roughly where I want it. Now I'm looking more at the skin tones and some of the other objects in the image and I'm not worried too much about these peppers going over at the minute. They've just gone slightly out of range. So if I take color boost and move it in a negative way, it's gonna take out the top most saturated areas more than it's gonna take out the least saturated areas. So you see now what I've done is pulled those peppers just back in to a nice range. I'm gonna add a little bit more, maybe a little bit more saturation in there, just to get that right. And by pulling and pushing between the two, I'm gonna get a really nice tone. So the color boost is literally just taking the edge off the peppers. The saturation is helping me keep my whites and my nice blacks here as well. So that's a combination of two. Another technique is, if I reset that again, is to go straight to the color boost tool. Let's just add that in. And then to bring back the whites and blacks, what we can do is go to a curve. So click on here to get our curves. And this one here, saturation versus saturation, is the one that I want to use. And this is areas of low saturation, and this side is areas, let me just move that, and this side is areas of high saturation. So we wanna work in the areas of low saturation, that's our whites and blacks. I'm just gonna add a point here, 
And if I just pull this down, if you watch the wall at the back there, I can clean it up by just pulling down here. I'm not going to pull it right to the bottom, but I'm just going to pull it down somewhere about here to keep it looking natural. And there we've now got a really nice saturation and vibrance, but our walls and the hairband have stayed nice and neutral. And I think again, just to get this just right, I'm just going to pull saturation back a little bit just to get that somewhere nice. There we go. We want it nice and colourful because it's a food programme, but I think that looks just right now. So there's another thing we need to take into account here, and that's apart from hitting the like button, and that is the order of operations. So each node, the tools behave in a certain order. So let's go and have a look at how that works. So this is taken straight from the DaVinci Resolve manual, and what it shows us is if you're working on a single node, but you're doing multiple things, this is the order in which they are prioritized. So we come in from our node input, you've got motion blur, noise reduction, etc., and we get all the way through to color boost. Now color boost has priority over hue and saturation. So color boost is affected before temperature tint, the HDR palette, lift gamma gain, contrast, all the curves, the log controls, and then we get saturation. So if the color boost and the saturation are sitting on the same node as we've just done, color boost is affected before saturation. So this is why it's fundamental to understand the workflow and the order that the nodes work in. So on a single node, what we did earlier is we increased saturation and we went all the way until those peppers were slightly over legal limit, but that kept our whites and blacks good. We then on the same node used color boost in a negative way to just pull the peppers into legal range. What was actually happening is the other way around. The color boost was actually working first, even though we applied it second, because of the order of operations, the color boost is activated first. So the color boost actually desaturated the red peppers before we added saturation. The end result is what we wanted, so that's what's important, but it's important to understand the workflow. So I'm going to show you using a grayscale what's actually going on. So I'm going to take this grayscale and I'm going to add some color to it. Okay, so that's using offset. I'm now going to go to my saturation tool and increase it. And you see that the color is getting far more saturated. And that is because saturation is sitting after lift, gamma gain and offset in the workflow of operations. Now, if I reset saturation, and increase color boost, nothing is happening in terms of saturation. And that is because color boost is prior to lift gamma gain and offset, which means effectively it's working before this change has happened. So if I reset that, this is what the color boost is affecting, just the grayscale, because that's happening before the offset. So I can increase grayscale as much as I want. There's no saturation in it, so there's nothing to boost, which explains why the order of operations is so important to understand. So I hope that's helped clear up the difference between color boost and saturation for you and when and why you'd use them. Remember, if you're working in color managed workflows, your saturation should be getting in a pretty good place to start with. So you don't want to be overdoing these tools. Uh, look after yourselves and I'll see you in the next episode.